Yeah, sorry, I've just found something really weird in my hoodie uh, pocket. Some sort of old breadstick or something. I... <laughs> okay. Sorry, that's just baffled me. I don't know what that's doing. I'm going to put that <laughs> on the side there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll just put that. I'll put that over there. Save that for later. <laughs> We're kicking off a brand new year of Bottom Up with a European Mega Drive classic in the book club and a great entry in the beloved series. It's Micro Machines Turbo Tournament 96. That and loads more in episode 40 of Bottom Up. Hello, it's episode 40 of Bottom Up, the big 4-0. Big 4-0. The big 4-0. How did we get this far so quickly? It's crazy. It is crazy. We say that every episode. Every episode we're like, oh, it's episode 38 <laughs> already. Yeah. Oh, episode 39. Who's allowing us to get this far? In the... <laughs> no, I thought we'd get to like episode 6 and then get bored. And so... then just, yeah, just wander off and do our <laughs> interpretive things, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm Ollie, that other man is Tibbs. Yes. We uh, produce a monthly podcast uh, about video games. Uh, the video game in question this month is Micro Machines Turbo Tournament 96 on the Mega Drive. We're going to be talking about that later. First of all, though, Tibbs, been playing anything interesting this month? Uh, this month, I have been mostly playing Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero. Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Cool. Um, elaborate? No. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Um, well, what it was, I was on eBay mm-hmm. and just looking for cheap, cheap things on eBay. Tat. Mm. Cheap tat. Did you put yeah. cheap tat into eBay? Yeah. Is that what you wrote? Oh, yeah. Okay, cheap enough. tat. Sort by know. cheapest. Buy it now first. <laughs> see what comes up. Yeah. What came up was a copy of Rock Band 4 on okay. the Xbox One. Yeah. So I thought, oh, not played a music game for a while. That'll be a laugh. Let's mm-hmm. get that. Because I thought, i still got some of the old guitars. Mm. Uh, a game, you plug it in, you plug in the guitar, should be fine, shouldn't it? That's more mm. a logical person would think. Yeah, yeah. Apparently not. Uh, so the game was, I think I paid three ninety five for it, something like that. So mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that's good. That'll be good, good, good times. Um, none of the old guitars work on it. Ugh. And bloody hell! Even because I thought, well, because all like the Guitar Hero guitars I got are Xbox three hundred and sixty. So I thought they're bound to just pair with the Xbox One, aren't they? Because it's an Xbox. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? No, no, they no. don't. They they don't. So I thought that's not a problem. I've got one of the old USB ones. Uh huh. Don't even need to power, just plug it in. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I thought, right, well, that's a, that's a trouble. I can't be the only person who's, who's had this trouble. Let's have a look online. Turns out they sell a little adapter that mm-hmm. you can plug in, the, the Rock Band Legacy adapter. Ah, brilliant. So I thought, well, that, that, that's that, what you sounds, need. that sounds just what I need. Yep. Um, I think the recommended retail price for it when it came out was uh, 25 quid. Mm-hmm. So I thought, mm, okay, 20, that, that negates the cheapness of the game a little bit, but okay, mm. I'll go for it. Mm. Uh, except they don't make it anymore. Mm-hmm. So you have to go on eBay. Uh, average price on eBay for them at the moment is between 250 and 300 quid. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. 
That's so ridiculous. I thought, this really? is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Wow. But I already had a hankering for the the music game then, so yeah. I dug out one of the old guitar. I think it was Guitar Hero Two, mm-hmm. and I just been been playing that. It's actually really good fun. Mm. Um, but yeah, two hundred quid for a legacy adapter to connect guitars and controllers you've already got to a console. I, I just, the whole thing's just madness. It's just really yeah. It's crazy. Oh man. Well, I mean, there's crazy. nothing particularly special. I would have thought. I mean, I, I, I'm not a developer, but I mean, the Guitar Hero controller mm. is just four buttons and a strum button, which is, you know, it's yeah, it's basically five buttons. <laughs> what's the what's the compatibility issue there? Yeah, I mean, it's quite simple, isn't it? I would yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I, I, there's not really any sort of secret sauce in there that I'm aware of because I, mm. I've, t- I, you know, I've took them apart before to replace the the little switches on the inside where you because the strum things wear out if you if you go yeah. too too <laughs> crazy wagging yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I, you know, I waggled it a lot. <laughs> you know. Sorry, and it broke. That's, that's going to go at the front of the episode. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you know, I've took apart. So I know, I know what's in there. It's just some, some, some buttons and a couple of little switches. And, uh, apparently, there's some kind of timing issue, and the, the I can't. But I, I, it all sounds a bit fishy to me, and I wasn't mm. happy about it. And I'm, mm. I'm even if I had two hundred and fifty quid, which I don't, and I'm not, I wouldn't spend it on an adapter that originally cost twenty five quid. No. To well, play that's, that's a... a game where, if I'm being perfectly honest, I probably won't like fifty percent of the tracks on anyway. <laughs> so there. Yeah. So um yeah that was that that was my big drama of the month. Um, yeah. Well yeah. I played a bit of GTA Five because I I got okay. I got a bit of a hankering for GTA after revisiting San Andreas. Mm, yeah. So I played GTA Five for a bit. That was good. Um, I played the online for a bit, which wasn't good. Um, mm. I think that's mostly. Well, yeah, that, that's mostly because work's been very busy. Um, yeah. So I haven't yeah. had as much time as usual to, you know, to just you know play the game. So between between our our game pick of the month, um, that's basically what I've been doing. Um, okay. No, that's all right. Know, Angsting over the cost of plastic guitars. Um, yeah, it sounds like that's kept you busy for the most the most part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm reasonably unreasonably frustrated by it. Um, yeah. I feel really personally aggrieved at the whole thing. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm not happy about it. No, I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah. What have you been mm. up to? Yeah, I've been up to bits. I've had I've had slight eye problems this this month. So uh, I haven't been playing, be able to play as, quite as much as I wanted to. Um, but I've been playing a game called The Pathless. It's a sort of a small scale. It's relatively. I think it came out last year. It's a small scale sort of open world puzzle game. It's got it's small scale and it's got three fairly vast open areas that you sort of unlock sequentially. But there's no maps to it. You you play as a character who can run quite fast, um, and he's got a bow and arrow. And there's little these little icons floating around the, the fields, and you sort of auto lock. You can auto lock your bow and arrow onto them. When you hit them, it increases your run meter, so you can run faster uh, and sort of keep up your pace. It's quite a nice uh, feature actually for sort of an open world game to sort of run quite quickly across it. It's really really quite satisfying. Um, but it's mainly a sort of a puzzle game. So there's little uh, puzzles to get these little icons. When you get a certain number of icons, you can unlock a tower. When you can unlock three towers, you unlock the boss of that region. Um, got a little falcon with you. He can fly fly you to places. Um, he's got a limited number of flaps, which you unlock more of as you as you play play through the game. Uh, so you can get higher and higher to reach different places. Uh, you can pick up objects for yourself, puzzles. Um, Sort of big fiery bosses to defeat. Quite impressive. Yeah, it's a nice little, nice little game. Yeah, sounds good. Fiery mm. boss and falcon flaps. That's all you need. Yeah, fa- um, yes, fiery boss and falcon flaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what systems it on? I'm playing it on PC. You can also play it on PS4 and PS5. Okay. Yeah. So it's um it's good. I'd recommend it. It's um it, it's about thirty quid. I think I got it uh, quite cheap on for fifteen quid, uh, which is well worth. I think um thirty quid might be. A little, I'd, I'd say thirty quid is a little bit much for what it is, but I think it is a good. It's about a seven-hour game, hmm. 
So, I've never even it, heard of it. The, the, no, the pathless. The pathless is it's got looks wise, it's a bit like Journey, but think forests instead of deserts. And you're kind okay, of okay. Yeah, I was I was going to say what what because I. I was imagining sort of Breath of the Wild style in my head. When Not you were quite. No, it's a bit it, more simplistic graphics-wise. Yeah. It's sort of a, a lower budget kind of game, I suppose. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, if you can see it for a little bit, yeah, I think actually uh, you can often get like PS4 and PS5 versions. I've seen them pop up on Twitter on for like deals and things for like fifteen quid, which is yeah, well there's, worth there's, it. There's quite. I mean, the, the PlayStation stores often does quite, you know, quite regular sales. Very. Though, so. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Mm. Um, so the other thing we've been playing actually is uh, Splatoon 2 oh yeah so game. yeah well my wife got it for herself recently uh, we've all been playing it Alice included but I, I, I've previously put her off based on what, what you've said about uh, all the cheaters in it and everything mm. uh, I have to say we haven't encountered well, I don't. I don't think we've encountered many cheaters at all on it, really. Oh, good. All the all the matches seem to be fairly even. You know, we, we when you know we win, you know, a fair amount of time. When we lose, it's, it's either because one of our teammates is clearly missing, or you know, it, we just got outclassed. So you know, I, I you don't. Haven't, think you haven't had people sort of flying across the map in front of you and things. No, like that. no, nothing, nothing. Obviously, you know, that oh, it good. shouldn't shouldn't be. I wonder if uh, uh, certainly with the. Uh, Release of the uh, Nintendo Switch OLED and the updated versions, you know, the Switch Lite and things like that, which are they're not impossible to hack, but they're very, mm. very difficult to hack comparatively. Ah, um, yeah. I wonder if that might have, over time, sort of lessened the pool of, you know, people inclined to hack, you know, as they've upgraded their consoles and bought new ones and things, the ability to actually hack the game is yeah, less, maybe. so the, the cheatings may be dropped off a bit, so, yeah. oh yeah. good, I might revisit that then, because I, I'd I, recommend I, it, I yeah. love Splatoon. Oh yeah, no, we've we've been having a blast with it for the last two or three weeks, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's just been a regular evening play, we just sort of pass the control around between the three of us, and it's, um, yeah, it's really good fun. Yeah, it's a great, yeah, it's a great game, it really is. Mm. Um... The what's that? I forget. But I'd see it so long since I played it now. Um, the uh, salmon, salmon run, salmon run. What's that? Have, have you played the salmon run mode yet? Oh no! Do you know what? I just play the normal mode. Abby likes those those different modes where you got to you know secure the thing. I don't I don't even know them. I just play the basic you know the normal mode. The salmon road salmon run mode is really good. It's just right. like a team of four against. The uh, it's like AI opponents, but it's kind of like um, it's like a horde mode, really, where you've got like waves of um, sort of angry salmon coming out of the ocean um, right. with like pots and pans on their head and things like that, <laughs> and you got to, you just got to try and survive as many waves as you can mm. and collect the salmon eggs um, in between each wave. So you've got to like collect as many salmon eggs as you can, survive all the waves of enemies, and then um, yeah, you you unlock like it, special costumes and prizes and stuff depending on how many uh, how many salmon eggs you can collect and things oh, right. um, it's okay. a really good little mode uh, for some reason it's like it only runs at certain times so there'll be sometimes you log on to play and that mode's disabled because the the little fisherman guy who runs it it's in the the main lobby ah. um he's not looking for staff at that time so you've got to <laughs> wait till he's looking for staff to you know go out and get the salmon eggs ah. um I don't know why you would sort of time lock a, a a mode in a multiplayer game, but they have. I think it's just to sort of stop it from stop you from just doing it over and over again, and then getting bored of it. Maybe just to yeah, just sort of keep it keep you coming back to see if it's available. I reckon they did. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a great it's a really good fun mode. It's it's a I'll nice change of out. pace to the to the normal sort of like the the capture the flag modes and hold the base modes and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, didn't yeah. know that was there at all. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, not a lot else really. Um, just edging a little bit more on Final Fantasy Nine. <laughs> 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 um, I play like maybe an hour a week or so. Obviously, it's not like gripping me quite enough to just keep playing all week, but it's it's you know I'm still enjoying it, so it's nice yeah. to just sort of chip away at it, you know, now and then. Um, I, I I can't remember the name of the place I'm in. It's that sort of forest that's been overrun by sand. You know, it's like sand flowing everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm in there at the moment. That's disc two though, so uh, making progress. Oh, you're making progress. Yeah. yeah, yeah, slowly but surely. It'll probably take me a full year, I expect, but you know. <laughs> 
News. The news. I've only got one thing written down here. Is it the Microsoft thing? Uh, no, actually, it isn't. We oh, can talk okay. about that first, if you like. Uh, they bought. Much to say about no, it. I don't either. I, I I did see that, and I thought, is that because they tend to just buy up loads and loads of studios, mostly that I that don't really have an impact on me and my game playing yet. Anyway, when they buy <laughs> when they buy up Sega, then then that'll be more significant to me. But <laughs> until that, you know, I've, I'm. I'm alright at the moment, but uh, yeah, any any thoughts? I mean, I I think it's bad for gaming as a whole if things yeah. are monopolised like that. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think new ideas come out when companies are competing against each other for the best ideas and best concepts, and you know, and if you've got Sony owning half of all the studios and you've got Microsoft owning the other half of all the studios, and there's not much of a middle ground, I think that's going to only be bad for innovation in the long run, but Hmm. Besides that, you know, hypothetical problem, I don't think it bothers me that much. I've, I don't think I've ever played a Blizzard game. Um, no, me neither. The only Activision games I've played in recent times are Tony Hawk's and Spyro, hmm. and Activision's just a publisher for them. They didn't do anything to develop it, so hmm. Hmm. I can't say I'm, you know, I haven't played Call of Duty for years so don't really interest me but no well i mean i suppose it's interesting that xbox will end up with more exclusives than it has had in the previous generation i suppose i suppose so yeah i mean i mean activision's got my a, a nice portfolio of of titles i mean that what well, they own guitar hero for a kickoff oh there you go earlier so. yeah you know, if, if they wanted to resurrect that and keep an eye on them, they might be able to solve your problem for cheaper say, than two hundred and fifty pounds. I was going to say, maybe if they do feel like doing a new a new <laughs> game that doesn't require a two hundred pound add on, then mm. you know, maybe I'll warm to them. But yeah, I'm, I can't say I'm as up in arms about it as everyone else seems to be. My concern mm. is just for you know, I don't like the trend of monopolization in general. Um, you know, companies all being consolidated under one big corporate umbrella. No, it's not but, nice, is it, really? Yeah. You know. Some of them tend to just sort of disappear within within that world as well, don't they? You never well, see yeah. them again, so it's, it's... Yeah, well, I mean, look at... Um, oh, well, I say I tell a lie. There was another third Activision game I played, and that was uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. Oh, yeah. Um, but they were all all the studios that made them. So Tony Hawk's came out. I think that was Vicarious Visions. I think mm. they did Crash Four as well, and then Toys for Bob did Spyro. Yeah. All three games came out. All, all critically very well received. All really good games. So Activision took all those studios and moved them on to working on Call of Duty. <laughs> and it's like oh, oh um, dear, that's sad, isn't it? It is really, you know, especially Tony Hawk's, which is, you know, the, the it's been producing stinkers for a long time. Mm, yes. No one thought a new Tony Hawk's game would be anything but a stinker. So it comes mm. out, turns out, it's really good. We haven't actually talked about that one. Um, so it's good, is it that one? It's great, yeah, mm. yeah, it's really good. It's oh, really cool. good. Yeah. Good. Um, a nice return to form. Mm. Um. So you would hope, you know, it's like the Tony Hawk's 1 and 2 remade. You would hope that seeing the success, Activision would then go, oh, why don't you get get cracking on Tony Hawk's 3 and 4? <laughs> or even better, or a new one. Yeah. just make a new one. Yeah. yeah. You know, go mad. Make, make a nice new game. But I, I don't understand business, evidently. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same argument we've had with Sega about Sonic Mania. Yeah. Comes out, critically well received, sells a truckload you would think the next, the obvious thing would be to do we'll have more of that please do it do it again make a new one but yeah. no no, no they, they they like uh, they like the idea of doing a sonic cologne instead Did you see that <laughs> 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 yeah forget that 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 majorly successful uh, game <laughs> what people really want is to smell like sonic <laughs> Oh my word! Yeah, yeah. What was what? What's the news you have written down? Okay, or was it well, the Sonic? Game? It's more of a, a talking point because it's been in the news, the gaming news, a lot lately, and it's three letters. Can you guess what it is? Oh yes, mm. is it NFT? It is. Oh now, my word! Well, the th the thing is, I don't really understand it all. I don't, I don't, <laughs> and I think you do because you tweet about it a lot. So I'm going to ask you. Okay. I kind of understand 
what an NFT is, at least in terms of like a, an image or a file that's on your computer, because it seems to be like, I don't know, I may be wrong, but some sort of way of making a particular file a one of a kind thing. And then if you have that, it's worth money. I don't know, even though surely you can just copy it. And it, even if you cop do a copied version, it's not the same. I don't understand. And I certainly don't understand how it applies to gaming, which a lot of these companies seem to be looking into and quite excited about, like, um, what was it, Square Enix made brought out something that pissed a lot of people off, didn't they? Yeah. So what, what, what's it all about? I don't really get it. I'll explain it as best as I understand it. Okay. Because I'm not a yeah. crypto guy. I'm not, you know... Yeah. I'll explain it as I understand it. So the blockchain which underpins all of uh, the sort of Bitcoin stuff, the NFTs, all the crypto things that you that you mm. hear about, mm -hmm. is basically like a big open ledger. Um, when you buy a, an NFT, yeah. you're basically buying an entry on a ledger, and that's it. So you could you get these ugly monkey avatars that people are selling. When you when someone buys the JPEG with invert, you know, air quotes. Mm. Mm -hmm. They're basically just buying an entry on a ledger that says, "I've paid for this picture of a monkey." Right. Yes. So, arguably, you don't own anything other than an entry on a ledger. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like signing your name in a guest book. You own that signature in the guest book, I suppose. But yeah. that's it. You don't really. It doesn't really bestow any ownership on things. Mm. Um, I. Th that said, it does have potential. In gaming, to to do some really good stuff, but it's being kind of co-opted into like a profit-making thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, like for instance, one really practical use of NFTs that I think would benefit gaming tremendously is that you could tie a license key to one. Mm -hmm. So you could make the, the NFT a license key to unlock a game or to, un, you know, uh, so you're, you own your license key to, um, what was the game you were playing earlier? The Pathless. Yeah. You've got that license key. You would then be able to sell that to someone else. So it could allow ah, for so you actual... could transfer ownership of a game. Actual, Digi genuine, a second-hand market for digital games. Ah, yeah, okay. You mm -hmm. know, and it's got potential to do that. It, the, 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 you know, it's that to me seems like an idea crying out for a technology to to make it happen. NFTs can do it, mm -hmm. but instead, because obviously that's not very profitable. No, of course the not. The only no. person <laughs> making money out of that is the person selling the NFT. Once you, you know, <laughs> it's going to be you, the consumer. Yes. So. At the moment, it seems to be just selling in-game items like weapon skins and all kinds of nonsense. I, I, I can't get my head around the way the technology is being applied at the moment. This idea of owning a JPEG, like you say, mm. you could just right-click and save it. You can take a screenshot <laughs> no, of it. I just, this is the crazy thing. I don't understand. I really don't understand it. Yeah, it's I crazy. don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. No. Um, as I understand it, a lot of the when you hear these big headlines of you know oh, picture of a monkey sells for two hundred and fifty million pounds. Yeah. Because apparently I I I I think we're in safe legal territory here because I don't even remember the name or what was involved in it. Mm. But one of these big sales, I don't even think it was the biggest sale, um, turned out. Because, like I said before, uh, anything on the blockchain is open. Uh, it's an open ledger. Anyone can look at it. If they've got the your address on the blockchain, they can see every transaction going in mm. and out of that wallet. So everything's open. Mm -hmm. And one of these big sales, it turned out the person was selling it to themselves on another wallet. And they forgot right. to they forgot to sort of obfuscate that fact that they were just selling it to themselves. Yeah. Um, and it's that kind of thing. There's a lot of that going on. 
there's a lot of that going on. Tr- you know, trying to oh, uh, right, to artificially increase the price by selling it to themselves. Exactly. You yeah, I exactly. See, I see. Right, okay. You know, so uh, uh, you know, someone who's maybe looking for a get-rich-quick scheme or very easily influenced would see the headline that this monkey picture sold for two hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars, pounds, whatever. And think, oh, great, I'm going to put all my money in these monkey pictures. <laughs> you know, not realising that it didn't really sell for that. You know, yeah. it's a bunch of people selling it to each other and selling it to themselves to, mm. you know. But I, it's all a mystery. I think I'm just old-fashioned. I, I, I don't understand this. I don't know, because a lot of people seem to have very, very strong opinions against them. I, you know, out of curiosity, I, sometimes whenever there's a, this tweet about NFTs, someone selling NFTs or whatever, you look at the comments, everyone is just so anti-NFT. And I think it's not just you. I think a lot of people don't like this sort of thing. And a lot you can of the sort con- of see through it, you know? A lot of the concern is the amount of computational power needed to maintain these blockchains and right mm. it's kind of like bitcoin where you know use like graphics cards and things to sort of yeah do, do something i can't I don't, I don't know what they're doing exactly but it's basically it does it, it works out a mathematical problem and for every problem it solves it gets you mine a reward for it so yeah 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 it's that kind of it's it's that kind of thing but the amount of computational power needed to do it is having quite a significant impact on the environment in terms of carbon emissions and power yeah. usage and mm-hmm. and things like that um, for no discernible good reason. <laughs> no, <laughs> just to make people some money, basically, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> to make some people money off of, off of nothing. Off of so. nothing. It's crazy, isn't it? What? What's going on with the world? It's... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, I know, I know, art is subjective, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and everything. But ninety-nine percent of the NFTs out there are awful. <laughs> They're just ugly nonsense. Mm. It's just awful. But like I say, it's it's like Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin has as a technology has quite a lot of potential for secure transactions over the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of got muddied into, you know, not obviously it can be used for illegal activities, um, yes. which puts a big, a big blot on its copybook. Um, but also it's kind of got tainted by people trying to profiteer from it. Yeah, you see, like the markets go up and down on it. Don't yeah, you? Like, suddenly they're worth nothing, and then they're worth something. And that's just, what I mean, yeah. you know. And it's it just kind of it ruins the whole thing. But mm. it's another one of those technologies. It's got bags of potential to do mm. good things and to make, uh, you know, transferring money over the internet quicker and more secure and easier to use. Mm. You know, um, but it's not being used like that. It's been used to for to profiteer and to to for greed. Mm-hmm. And again, I think, you know, how good would it be? How What a difference would it make to, particularly PC gaming, mm. if there was an actual fair second-hand market for digital games? Yeah. You mm. know, that would be, be great. quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would It would change the landscape of, of, of gaming on, on PC. I mean, I don't think it would ever come to consoles because they tend to be sort of walled gardens. a bit more locked down, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But for PCs, I mean, it's a tremendous idea that could be easily implemented. But mm. yeah, it's probably not going to happen, is it? It's probably for... <laughs> not going to happen. I mean, there's probably people listening to this. If someone is listening to this who's into NFTs, they're probably thinking Tibbs is an idiot. He doesn't understand this at all. And that <laughs> might be the case. I, I hold my hands up and say, you know, I don't fully understand the technology behind it. I think I've got a very a very high level understanding of in terms of you know not high, you know high level as in yeah like, that's it further far yeah like high yeah. level programming like far far away from the the source exactly yeah. I don't really know the nuts and bolts of it I've just got a, you know an understanding of the very broad stroke concepts of it yeah and I don't really understand the the idea of buying a JPEG either no no when it comes <laughs> that's, down to it that's the stupidest thing of all really isn't it. 
<laughs> it really is. It really is. I mean, I don't want to sound like two old farts moaning about how things used to be in their day, but yeah. 20 years ago, or like back in, like on, on the days when we used to chat on MSN, yeah. if I said to you, I found this great JPEG, I was, mm. do you want to buy it for a fiver? Mm. <laughs> it's just madness. It just no, no don't, don't right click on it. Just don't don't do that. Whatever you do, <laughs> don't right. It's like that old. Is it like that old meme thing where someone like, um, oh, what is it? You you will have seen it. It's like an email like joke that someone sent to someone. It's like they send them an image and they say, "Can I have that image back, please?" You know? Oh yeah, that's the the guy who did the spider. Yeah, the spider picture. It's just like that, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. 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 It, it, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I mean, it's all. There, there's a. It reminds me. It's in this in a different context, but there's a um, video guiding clip that I. I think I posted it on the Podum Up thing, or I might have sent it to you. Um, it's uh, Robert from Video Guide, and he's the one of the presenters of the new Games Master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good, isn't he? Yeah. And he was talking about. Um, uh, video game collecting mm-hmm. and his disdain for people who just buy sealed games and just keep them on a shelf and never touch them. Yeah, yeah. And he said in he, there's a line he said in that where society is screwed because it's all about having what the other guy doesn't have for no other reason than just because. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's NFTs to me, really. <laughs> yes, it is. I've got this and you don't. Yeah. yeah. That's literally it. But it's I can just... sell it to you for a large amount of money. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I don't know if we've done the topic justice, to be honest. But um... well, I I think it because it, I I had a lot of questions about it, and you've I think you've answered quite a lot of those. To be fair, uh, to sort of make it a bit clearer, and like how perhaps how gaming can how it can apply to gaming and, and yeah. things like that. So uh, you know, maybe there's another side to it that we're not covering, but. Um, it, it, uh, there, there is one. Th- there's a topic that's been brought up a few times about it because apparently mm. uh, the pro NFT people, one of the arguments they're making is that say you buy a gun in Call of Duty, say mm. you buy some fancy gun with a funny paint on it. If with NFTs, you'll be able to take that into any game that you know any any Call of Duty game forever. Mm. That will be your gun, like you own the gun in real life, and you can take that with you to all the other games. Yeah, that can't possibly work. Uh, you know, do you really? Well, no, think... it, it it just relies entirely on them programming the game in the, exactly. the gun in. Surely, exactly. And do you really? It's think... not just going to magically appear. It's, it's just gonna... it's just the ownership of of a of of a thing. It's, up, it's entirely up to the game makers whether they choose to honour that later on, isn't it? Surely. That's what I mean. Do, do you really think game developers are going to spend their time keeping all these uh, models, meshes of all these different guns that people have bought 20 years ago? Yeah, we better keep that in because that, that guy, you know, he's still got that gun. He's he still got use that. It we this... better make sure that's in the new game. <laughs> it's just it's just madness that people believe that. I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, that seems a bit I mean, silly. And it's not as if you need NFTs to do that, really, is it? I mean. No. No, I mean, you can do that with bog standard DLC at the moment, can't you? If you mm. want to support it, just... I mean, I suppose it allows for, like, a sort of a database to look up who owns what. Otherwise, you've got to keep track of that yourself, really, haven't you? But, I mean, so I see the point there, but it's, it doesn't automatically mean that. It just means, you know, it's it's entirely up to the game developer, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... I mean, perhaps Nintendo should use it for when they keep releasing a new console and keep... You know, when well, to be fair, they've got the 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 online thing, which is like a stream, like, you know, like a subscription. But but before that, they were doing virtual consoles for every console, and you had to rebuy Mario World again on the yeah. Wii, and then the Wii U. You know, it would have been quite good to buy it once and then be able to use it on all future Nintendo consoles. Yeah, and then that's your ownership of it. And I think know, it was I think it was worse than that because it was locked to the console rather than the account. I yeah. Believe. So well, if you yeah. got a new so Wii, you... you had to buy them all again. Yeah, well, that's nuts, isn't it? That's mental. But you know, I, I, you know, I could see the use for that. But if Nintendo were to choose to to do that, then you know, I mean, that could be a positive use for NFTs. You know, you you buy this game digitally and you own it forever. Then on on everything that chooses to honour it. But yeah. uh, again, it's entirely up to the platform holder, isn't it? It does. Yeah, it's mm. entirely dependent on them and. 
I think we're just getting old, mate. I say, I say well, we are, yeah. That is, there is that. I mean, there's so many things I don't understand. I don't understand it. I don't TikTok. Un- I don't understand TikTok. <laughs> Don't get me started on TikTok. <laughs> don't get me started on it. I hate it. I don't even know what it is, but I don't understand it. I hate it. I, I read a thing in the paper. Um, yeah. Well, that shows that shows In the paper, age, yeah. Like, oh, I read it in the paper. I read a thing in the paper. Oh, legacy media. Um, They've got this re- thing about those video games in this paper. You've seen it. <laughs> it says they're bad for you. <laughs> no, apparently there's this thing, right? Some some person like you've heard the idea. You've I'm sure you've heard that if you got a cold, a mm-hmm. uh, bit of chicken soup. Yeah, chicken soup for the cold yeah. <laughs> soul, whatever. Yeah, for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently that's meant to be a good thing. Yeah. So some galaxy brain on um, TikTok thought, wow, if that's good for a cold, and cough medicine's good for a cold. If you marinate the chicken in cough medicine, <laughs> you'll have a super cure for the cold, won't you? <laughs> and that's apparently that's what, apparently that's what's going on. What? And d- d- some doctors put out a warning saying, <sighs> "Don't do this. It's a really bad idea." <laughs> so it's what? What's really bad? But what's the link to TikTok? Someone did it on TikTok, and yeah. now other people are doing it on TikTok. What's... Yeah, yeah. Apparently, that, that's how I understand it. Yeah, someone did it on TikTok. Apparently, the person who did it on TikTok as well. Part of the instructions were the when he was talking about the amount you pour in of the mm. cough medicine, you have to pour four thirds of the bottle in. <laughs> four thirds. You know, Jesus that's, Christ. That's TikTok. I doubt. Okay. That's TikTok. <laughs> It's crazy. It's like some, it's like some dystopian sci-fi where so it feels like we're that's where we're living now, isn't it? Like a dystopian, yeah, weird world. Yeah, like you, if if someone you, made a movie of like the world as it is now and put it out twenty years ago, you'd be thinking, well, yeah. Christ, what is going on here? Do you remember, you know, RoboCop? The, the, yeah. like the TV segment so you said that was intercut between RoboCop and they were like these really sort of hyper exaggerated ideas of what the future would be like. They weren't far off. No. <laughs> they weren't far off. Anyway. Yeah. I think back to back to um, Mega Drive games from 1995. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the good old times when people knew what they were doing with their lives. Pod them up with Statler and Wardle. <laughs> yeah. In my day, we used to drive tiny little cars around bathtubs, and we, and that was all we needed. Micro Machines Turbo Tournament '96 is yes. the game we're playing this month. We're going to talk about it after the break. Let's do it. The video game. Oh, you said let's do it again. Don't oh, say I that. Did- Oh, you know, you're banned a... from saying let's do it. Oh no. Okay, um Let's don't do it. <laughs> let's not. The video game book club. talking about Micro Machines Turbo Tournament 96, uh, released despite its name in October 1995, <laughs> which happens to, which always happens to games, isn't it? It's like, if any game has a year in it, you know it came out the year before. Yeah, and really, they get this book of records. It? They do it. Yeah, sorry, I've just found something really weird in my hoodie uh, pocket, some sort of old breadstick or something. <laughs> I, okay. Sorry, that's just baffled me. I don't know what that's doing. I'm going to put that <laughs> on the side there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll just put that I'll uh, put that over there, save that for later. <laughs> um, yeah, released in October 95, exclusively in Europe for the Sega Mega Drive. Oh, I didn't know that. No, it didn't come out anywhere else other than good old Europe. I think it's the same for Micro Machines 2 as well. I don't think that came out anywhere other than Europe. 
apart from the DOS version, apparently. Uh, which is interesting, really, isn't it? I think it does sort of cement it as kind of a very sort of British game, doesn't it? It's yeah. something that we seem to enjoy a lot. The, the old ones, anyway. I think the later ones came out everywhere, didn't they, really? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this one was developed by uh, Supersonic Software and published by Codemasters. Uh, it's the third title in the long-running series of top-down racing games. Uh, so, And it's actually now available on CEX, or SEX, if you prefer, uh, for as little as uh, six pounds unboxed. Six quite... for six pounds? So, yeah, six for six pounds. Uh, eight pounds boxed and 15 pounds for a mint version, apparently. Um, I think I paid a little bit more than that because I, I owned this when I was a kid. Um, but when I sort of got to the N64 era, era, I gave my cousins my Mega Drive and all my games as sort of a long-term loan thing. And when I finally got them back, that and three, two other games were missing. And it winds me up to this very day. It really does. Traded them. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, mm. it's just, uh, yeah, I'm really bothered. I have since bought back all of them. I think I paid more than that for this one uh, uh, about four or five years ago, maybe. I'm going to say, I think, because I borrowed it from uh, my uh, neighbour who lived three doors up. Mm -hmm. I borrowed it from them back in the day. Um, and I bought it again, it must have been probably about the same, but like a few years ago. Mm. And I think I paid about, probably about 25 quid, I think. Yeah, yeah. Some For some reason it's dropped in price. Um, yeah. Which is uh, interesting. But it means you can pick up a great game for a... Uh, for a bargain. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. say so. So, uh, if you're not familiar with micro machines, you don't know what they are. Uh, I mean, first of all, they're little toys, little dinky toy cars uh, made in the 80s, very popular in the 90s. Mm. I think they've tried to bring them back several times, according to Wikipedia, anyway, over the, the intervening years. Um, we were in a toy shop about two or three months ago and I saw new versions of them. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so they're out there in the wild at the moment. I've still got some of my old original micro Yeah, I do Wikipedia. somewhere. I don't know where they are. But, I've um, got this cool little... It's like a, uh, It looks like a petrol can, like a jerry can. Oh, right. And the side folds open, and mm -hmm. the, other, the other side folds open. And on the back, it's got like a little container for all your little micro-machines. And yeah. on the front, the, the front side of it, it's got like a mountain side with a little coastal road going down it. Mm. Um, and it's got like a little elevator and you turn the cap of the petrol can to make the elevator go up and down oh, man. It's, it's great, I loved it they had lovely little sets like that. I never only ha I never had any but I really wanted that truck that you opened up and it was like a whole city oh, inside I wanted. Oh. I never had the truck but I wanted that so much oh, me too, I really wanted that you know when you flick through the Argos catalogue and there's stuff that you always wanted but you never got Yeah, that was definitely one of them that for was me. one of them for sure but there's so many little cool things like that like that sort of opened up and you because they were so tiny, you could do a lot with a relatively small amount of space yeah. in those things, couldn't you? Yeah, they're yeah, great they were, fun micro machines. They were great little toys, yeah. So uh, the, these, the games that are based on obviously a licensed game, but you know, kind of fairly loosely. It's a top-down racing game, and you race various cars around, various rooms of the house, really. So you've got like bathrooms, breakfast tables, uh, gardens, etc. And they're all sort of really dinky, so they go around things that are quite small in real life but appear very big in in the game and it's um it's great fun it's an idea that is endured really and there's yeah. still games i mean there's there's micro machine games still but i mean there's other games uh that have carried on that same that exact same formula as far as as recently as the ps3 and ps4 yeah um so it's just a great fun idea it's really good isn't it so these original ones, there's Micro Machines, Micro Machines 2, Micro Machines 96, which most places state as a sort of enhanced version of Micro Machines 2. Yeah. I've always found it to be more of its own game, really. I've always considered it its own game, but I, I guess... I think it's got a lot of the tracks from 2, but it also adds a lot of its own as well. Um, I find it difficult to pinpoint the, the, the exact numbers um, because there's a lot sort of buried in there. You, you know, that we'll go through it in a minute, but there's loads of different modes and some of them have different sets of tracks to go through. And, you know, some quite tough modes in there and they've all got loads of tra different tracks buried in there. So it's it's tough to work out how, many, how much of it is new and how much of it isn't. But, uh, you know, it's got its own menu, menu system that's separate from two. It's got uh, it's got the course creator, which we'll go to later, go into later on as well. Um, it's got its own soundtrack, so it always it's always felt to me like its own sort of game, really. Yeah. 
I can see how they because it's also called like Micro Machines Two was Micro Machines Two Turbo Tournament, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe that's where the idea that it's some kind of enhanced version comes from that because they're both called Turbo Tournament. But yeah, I always yeah t- t- I always sort of thought of it as its own sequel. Really, it's its own its own thing. Mm. Um, yeah, and then you had Micro Machines Military, and those are sort of the four originals I would say. And then after that, they went some more sort of three D. V3 on the PlayStation, and then V4 on PS2, etc. Yeah. And I think that's where they added the power-ups and things like that to make it more more like a sort of a Mario Kart, I guess. Yeah. And this one doesn't, apart from the tanks, which can fire, this do, these original ones don't really have any sort of weapons and stuff. And I think there's a certain purity about that that I really like. Yeah. I think as soon as you start adding weapons, it kind of gets a bit chaotic. This is about sort of mastering, really mastering those dri- that driving and, and sort of knowing the courses. And and also because the physics are quite sort of almost like bumper car kind of thing. They're quite, they're, they're well done for, for a game of this time. And you, I find, you know, if, if you start to learn the course and you, you kind of, you get a bit smart and you've got your, your rival next to you, you think, oh, I'm going to try and knock him off here. But you've got to know what you're doing really well because you could just as easily just miss him and just fall right off <laughs> yourself you know so you, it, there's a there's a certain mastery to this that i really like and you've got to really know those courses because the, you don't get a lot of screen space and you're going quite fast so you need to know when the turnings are coming up would you agree to that yeah i'd agree to that yeah i find the physics very hard to get to grips with at first Yes, I mean, there's a, there's back, a steep remember, learning curve, definitely. Yeah, it's a very yeah, I think it's a very steep learning curve because I first the first Micro Machines I played, I played the uh, Micro Machines one, but I played it on the Amiga uh, yeah. rather than the the Mega Drive, mm-hmm. um, and it didn't control very well because it had only had like a clicky joystick rather than the D pad, and it didn't. I never got to grips with it then. Right. Um, and then playing Micro Machines ninety six. Yeah, I find it very frustrating at first to get to grips with the physics. But like you say, it is a lot about learning the tracks and the obstacles and stuff, rather yeah. than... It's more about that than it is mastering the control of the vehicle, I think. I think so, yeah. You can kind of get to grips, because the vehicle can change directions on the screen, so the the screen doesn't rotate or anything with you. So you can be heading up and left is left and right is right, but suddenly it'll turn and then right is down yeah and then uh, right is is left really and you've kind of got to look from the perspective of the car mm. um I, I think you can get the hang of that fairly or i did you can get the hang of that fairly quickly and, and there wasn't many times where i was pressed the wrong button to go in the wrong direction so i, I think you can pick that up or it could, might be it might you, feel a bit weird at first yeah you can pick that up i think it's it's very easy to oversteer uh, it's, yes, it is, like some yeah. of it is really sort of feather touch on the D-pad as you're going round. You know, if you mm. if you hold the D-pad down like you would in, you know, other racing games, say, you know, say you're used to playing um, Outrun or something, where you 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 just hold the the button down to go around a corner, mm. you know, you'll find yourself going in circles or just over steering and falling off the table and things like that. It's, you know? it's very it, yeah, it, it's very sensitive, mm. and you can easily even if you try and take a corner as you expect it you can sort of just fall off very yeah. easily and those courses are pretty unforgiving you know a lot of them are very on lot tables and like little bridges connecting to tables and you can you know if you don't know what's coming up it's very very easy to fall off you've got yeah. a really you you very rarely do a course perfectly the first time unless it's a very very simple one perhaps so there is a stiff learning curve there and you've really got to practice but I think if you can, you you get more and more rewarding out of it. The more oh, you definitely. play it, definitely. I mean, and particularly in multiplayer, if you've got someone who has an equal skill level to you, I think it's just it's pretty crazy fun, isn't it? Really, because I was going to say, I think the game really comes into its own in multiplayer. Doesn't I think it? so. I think that's chiefly what it's designed yeah. for. I mean, this this game caters you well. The single player very well. It's got loads of different modes in it, and you can it'll keep you so busy certainly. But that that multiplayer is really what it's geared up towards, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the head-to-head challenge is a really good idea. The the way the the point system, you know, and it sort of goes back and forth. So with this, I think it's in all Micro Machines games really. But you've got, and you can play it single player. And I did this. This is what I spent. I spent most of my time doing them with the the single player version of head-to-head, where you just race a series of races, and you only race one character each time. Mm. You've got eight points along the side, three red. Uh, sorry, four red, four blue, and you're the red guy. And every time you get far enough away from the other guy that you sort of push him off the other end of the screen, you get a point. You get one of his points. So you get five points, six points. And the winner is the first one to all eight points or 
I think it's the first one to finish the three laps with the most points, basically. And that's so fun because it's so back and forth, isn't it? Like yeah. you get one over him and then he gets one over you. And then it's just, it's a constant tussle. And I found myself, if I won one, eventually I just, I just literally just one of those stand up and fist in the air moments, you know, it's, it's really, really good. I really enjoy those. Did you play? What what modes did you play? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I can't really add much to that because I think most of my time I actually spent in, and I didn't know if we wanted to go into this yet, but mm. I found myself spending the most time in the creator track mode. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And it's funny because that's how I spent the most time when I played it originally as well. Well, I did as well. That's what I did as well because, I mean, the the chief reason is I kind of, I use save states to cheat my way through the head-to-head sequence because <laughs> you get, yeah. you you only get three lives. You only get three chances and then you've got to start the sequence all over again. So in the basic head-to-head, there's ten a series of 10 races and you can do a pro version with 15 different races, different tracks. Um, but you only get three goes throughout the whole thing and obviously if you don't know what you're doing you'll you you'll barely get past the first met one maybe the second one um and it's really hard to keep going and i i lost lives a lot so i just kept restarting the same state <laughs> over and over again for each one <laughs> and made a sort of modernized it you know that's what i tend to do with my a lot of my retro games i, I sort of modernize their difficulty by you by cheating basically um so i had a lot of fun doing that but yes back in the day i wouldn't have done that i would have just tried it a few times and failed and just messed around with the the, the level creator which I, sat, I I did a little bit this time, but um, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so 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 go on then. How did you? Uh, what what did you get up to? I just made. Just, I just I just love it. I just love making the tracks. It's what it's what I found the most interesting thing about it. Back when I played it back in the day, because I can't think of any game that I'd played up to that point that allowed you to make your own content for the game. It's very unusual on the Mega Drive, anyway. It was very yeah. unusual. I think perhaps it was more of a PC and maybe a Mega thing at the time. You know, sort of custom levels and things like that. Yeah. But certainly on the Mega Drive, I think pretty much unheard of. I can't think of anything else that allowed I you to do that really. Off the top I of my really head. can't think of anything else around that time that you mm. know allowed you to just take control and make your own things in the game. And I just found, you know, I loved it. I just loved the idea of it. I find it really addictive and. I got to say it's just, it's the same thing. I just kept coming back to that mode, and I'm not. It's not the most flexible no thing in the world. You're you know there isn't a great deal. You you're, like modern systems that allow you to make your your own content, like say Little Big Planet and things like that. Yeah. The kind of stuff people can make with it is mind blowing sometimes. Oh you yeah, can make of course. Incredible things. It's nothing on the level of things like that. You you're no. basically you just plop down sections of track and make your own sort of things but it's so much fun to do mm. it's just so much fun to just tweak things and try and you know make these interesting little tracks uh, it's just uh, it's just a really fun thing about making your own your own layouts and things mm. um but yeah i ju- i just had a a great deal of fun just just making making little tracks oh yeah i mean i i love love getting into level editing sometimes so i did it big time with um mario maker 2 you know mm, yeah. there's certain games that you just you get you really you can really get into that bit and it's more fun to do that than play the actual game you know so yeah it's interesting to see that you you, you came back to it and did this found that the second time around you know yeah you know as a I know, as an I, adult you know. it's been lost to time i was hoping i'd still have it in like a like a box somewhere but mm. I was I was so obsessed with the game back in the day. I remember I had a, like like a little notebook in my school bag, and yeah. I would when I was supposed to be studying in school, I would draw out little plans of oh, of the, the the maps that I would do, like the tracks that I wanted to make when I got home. And yeah. I was hoping it would still exist somewhere in a box, and I yeah. I couldn't find it because oh, I, I would I have scanned that. some in to put on the Twitter. Yeah, that'd be um, great. Yeah. But yeah, and I, I gave them all like little track names and a, a little star rating of how difficult I thought they were going to be and all that kind of stuff. And, and mm. I, yeah, it's it's just yeah, a proper nostalgia trip, I think. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can actually export tracks. You you can turn them into a, a long sequence of uh, letters and numbers and actually load them into another person's game. Yeah. And then save them on there, which is a really cool thing, isn't it? The, it's the so ability. Good very ahead of its time to share 
your levels with another person on another cartridge. Yeah. Um, and actually, in the box, mine doesn't have them. The second one I bought uh, is a fairly well used one, and it's just got the cartridge and the instruction manual in it. But originally, they would come with several nice little bits of, of stuff inside. It comes with a, a password card to write down all the codes for one level, so you can easily share it with another person. Uh, it's also got a tournament invitation, so you can <laughs> give out to someone, and a tournament winner certificate. Oh, amazing. I didn't know That's that. Lovely. Mine didn't come with that. No, no. My, my original one still had it in there, because I never used them, uh, which is lost to time now. But uh, And this one doesn't. But it's a lovely idea, isn't it? The, the fact that they put that in, and they, they really wanted you to make this into a party you know yeah to, to, to throw a party this is a tournament it's happening here. Is a little space for you to fill in your name and where it's happening and then the the, the certificate you give to the, the tournament winner oh, what I a love lovely, what a lovely so thing good. yeah Brilliant. i didn't know that that's amazing yeah also uh the manual which i have in front of me actually i was going to reference various bits of it because there's quite a lot of interesting stuff in there um apparently according to manual the game uses a non-volatile ram saving system as opposed to a battery backup, which apparently keeps your save data safe for about for up to a hundred years, it says. Oh, wow! Which is good to know. So anything anything you've written on there should be safe, should for, be safe yeah. for your lifetime, hopefully. So the the actual the course creator I have in my notes was based on the DOS version from Micro Machines Two. The uh, the DOS version was a, a extended version of Micro Machines Two, and that had a uh, an even more elaborate level creator where you could actually edit things pixel by pixel. Okay. Apparently, so you could load up a picture of a flower pot or something and, and turn it into something else. Literally, just just create your own stuff. And I mean, how much more creative would would that make your your courses? I mean, that'd yeah, be, that'd be yeah. very time consuming. But you could turn in, turn into anything, I assume. You yeah, know, make whole new level environments. Enti- yeah, the, the whole thing. If you got the time to put into it, yeah. Mm, lovely. It's just great that uh, at this point, the third third game in, they were they were thinking about things like that and how what people would like to to do with their courses and how they would change it. Yeah, great. Um, of course, the cartridge itself uses the J cart, which yeah, we've talked we've, about in previous I'm episodes. Say we've talked me. about that before. Yeah. So this uh, in the Mega Drive anyway. I don't think it didn't wasn't for the SNES version. I don't think. I think I it was don't just recall the, any SNES cartridges having. I th- no, I mean the, the 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 plug would be too wide for it anyway, wouldn't they? They're quite yeah. wide, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite wide. Yeah, they take up um, a lot of the real estate on the cartridge. But the the anyway, the cartridge, the Mega Drive one has two slots for your for extra joy pads, so you don't need uh, the multi tap. You can literally hook up two other controllers to the cartridge itself to get four player going on. That's such a cool idea, isn't it's it? So good. It's, it's really, so good. really good. We, we've definitely had this conversation before, but I I really miss that aspect of cartridge games where. Yeah. You know, like the Star Fox having um, the Super FX chip, the J yeah. Carts having the controllers, the lock on chip, the lock on cartridge for Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, all the, these extra things the that they were able them, to do. The rumble on drill dozer that we we played yeah. in the previous episode. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, there's so many things like that. What's the that light one? Sensor on I was going to say, yeah. yeah, 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 great, great stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I know discs and digital uh, you know that that's for obvious reasons you know they they offer a lot of advantages over cartridges but i do kind of lament the loss of that you know add-ons i like add-ons and peripherals and expansions well you wouldn't even be able to do it on switch cartridges either because they're t- tucked away inside the yeah, console and away. sealed away you can't even add anything onto them really i suppose no. you might be able to have something sticking out of it maybe if you left yeah. this little flap open maybe i'm gonna say you but... could leave the flap open I don't think anyone's going to bother, really, are they? No. Sadly. No. No, it's something lost to time, unfortunately. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think, you know, console expansions are a great thing. I know everyone looks back with disdain at the Mega CD and the 32X and all these other things. I love them, and I mm. wish they were still a thing, because they're, oh, yeah. they're, just, they're, just, they're just cool. I just think they're neat. Yeah. There's a lot of general stuff we still haven't sort of talked about with this game, really. There's, um, I mean, there's the characters. The characters are always fun because you could change their names, couldn't you? You can always put your mates' names as the characters. Did yeah. you do this? Yeah. Yes. It's always a bit of fun. <laughs> um, I've got a list of the characters. I thought we could do this. I've got a list of the characters all here right in front of me. I wondered if you could think of as many of them, as many of those characters as you can, as you can think of. Oh. Their names, um... their original names. 
Spider. Spiders, yeah. I I was always Spider. I was always reason. Spider. <laughs> I th- he doesn't look anything like me. He's like a sort of a, almost like a fifties kind of uh, Fonzie looking character, isn't he? But because he's the default character, you kind of just go with him, don't you? Because he's cool. Yeah. He's nineties cool. Even That's the thing. Sort of it was the nineties. He had sunglasses on, so he was cool. He was automatically cool. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, the only two I can think of, because the only two I played as, was Spider and Violet. That's the only ones. I oh, think Violet, of. yeah. And of obviously, course. Violet is Violet Berlin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, famously uh, from uh, Bad Influence. Bad yeah. Influence. I think she turned up to the studios and they uh, they agreed to make her a character, and she wanted yeah. to be the fastest character, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she is at the end of the first head to head series, the, the 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 normal one. She's the like the the boss character at the end, basically, and she is faster. She's noticeably faster. You race her on the pool table. I I could do it, but I had to use a lot of safe states within the course itself just to be. Because <laughs> she's really tough, <laughs> and the course itself was rock hard as well. Yeah, in the one with, who's uh, the one with the pigtails? There's a jo- Jolene. I've got here. Maybe. Mm. There's um Bruno. We got Bruno. Sort of the, the sort of bruiser kind of tough guy looking. Oh character. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you got Dwayne. <clears throat> Dwayne with the, with the backwards red cap. Yes, looks got, a bit. Looks a bit daft. Looks a bit daft. You got Walter, big fat Walter with slurping the milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> you got Chen, the the sort of Chinese the guy. Yeah, uh, the bandana. Is that Chen? It, it, no, Chen is the sort of Chinese guy or Asian guy. Oh, and you, Ed, Edina has a bandana, as far as I can see. I've got like black and white pictures of them in front of me in the manual. Uh, but yeah, there's all this, the sort of memorable kind of characters that go with it. Because whenever you choose a race, you choose these characters, and they've got like these little pictures, and they sort of go with the the iconography of the whole thing, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like this... I say, it was always I. I never played as anyone but Spider and Violet. Really. Oh no, I didn't. No, no. I think. Even though Violet wanted to be the fastest one, when you play as her, they're all the same speed. Yeah. It's only the A when they're controlled by AI. Yeah. Um, just sort of touch briefly on the different modes and the different courses, really. Um, so you've got when you just when you load it up, you've got a whole wealth of different options, haven't you? Like mm. very much so for the. I think I feel like at this time maybe that was what you had with racing games, wasn't it? Racing games from, from now and from this point onwards, really that. They're all about different modes, aren't yeah. they, really? You know, your time attack, your challenges, Grand Prix, etc. Mm. And this one gives you a whole wall of them. So you've got the basic challenge where it's just a series of races against three other AI competitors. You've got to finish first or second. Uh, head-to-head, I've already mentioned, that's the points thing. You've got TT challenge, where you just compete for the best times against other AI components. You've got a league, which is kind of like a series of Grand Prix, but it's like three leagues of them and you start at the bottom and if you beat that one you go up to the next one and then if you lose at that one you go back down to the the previous one and you got time trials as well and then in multiplayer you've got uh you know single races tournaments and the the eight player share controller thing which is quite an interesting thing isn't it i don't know if you've ever tried this i've never tried it i can't no. imagine it works that well no, I don't know how it works because I think the idea is two people hold a half of a Mega Drive half controller, a controller each. and they've only got. There's a picture of it in the on the back of the box actually, uh, and they're doing that. And one person's got his hands on the A and the C buttons, and another one's on the left and right buttons. So I'm assuming they go automatically, and you just steer them left and right. That's how that I must, understand That must it, be yeah. how it works. Yeah. But then, I, mean, I suppose you could do it like that, really. If you re- if everyone really knew the tracks and yeah, I think I think it's sort of just meant to be a bit of fun though, isn't it? Really, like I think anyone doing that isn't supposed to take it super seriously. I think no. it's just kind of chaotic fun. People just, with eight car- with eight like cars on the screen as well. You're going to be knocking each other off all the time, and <laughs> it's going to be pretty hectic. It's so going to be crazy. I think... Yeah, I can't imagine it. I, ju- I just can't imagine it working. No, very but well. the idea of just holding a <laughs> control, sharing a control bar with another person, and like pulling it back and forth between each other and it just sounds like a hell of a lot of fun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the, the the amount of stuff in here and there's some um, there's some uh, there's a lot of courses in here as well i think i think there's as many as 65 different tracks in here 
Why not? Some of them are based in the same environments, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. There's only there's only a few different themes for the levels, isn't there? But yeah. it's all, you know, the tracks are all different. Yeah, and there's a, as far as I can tell, there's potentially f- up to forty new ones. I think it said somewhere, and then the rest are all from Micro Machines too. So that really does make it its own game, really, doesn't it? If that's yeah, true. Yeah, I'd say that's yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's a bit like how Mario Kart's just keep well, half of them are old tracks, aren't they? In, in most Mario Kart's, so mm-hmm. yeah, I don't see how this can be really be classed as an extended version of two and not no, its own I don't game. Think really, so. I think it's its own game. I think we appreciate it as its own game. Yeah. But yeah, some of the courses, and all the different courses have different machines as well. We didn't really make that clear. It's not just cars. It's not the same cars over and over. You get boats, you get little oh, yeah. helicopters and yeah. things, and they all control differently as well. Monster trucks, um, just any sort of vehicle you can think of that would have been a Micro Machines toy. You can play as it in here somewhere, I expect. Um, you've got things like the breakfast table with the rotating corn on the cobs. You've got that. Uh, the sponge. Do you remember the sponge on yeah. that level where you cut the kitchen sink and there's a sponge that goes back and forth and you've got to sit on the sponge <laughs> without falling off and it becomes like you try and knock <laughs> knock other people off and then you'll fall off yourself, of course. And it's just, oh, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? It is. It's, you just, can it's imagine. just a great idea. I, de- I definitely played multiplayer back in the day with friends because my friend had, t- had had two, so I remember playing that and we would have done that. I can't really remember a lot of it, to be honest, but I'm sure we would have had a great time on it. I do remember this, doing the sponge level on, back in that, back in those days, and it was just... It's just lo- loads of little ideas like that. There's loads of little interactive things. You know, you go down... You go on, like, the workbench level, and there's, like, hammer knocking Hammer's around, and down, drills yeah. coming in and out, and there's loads of things like that. It's just a, it's just a great idea. It's just... It's like the, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing, isn't it? You know, it's just seeing all you know playing around with the perspective of these everyday objects you know and, yeah and i guess you know when you played with micro machines as a kid it's what you did in real life as well you you ran oh, around absolutely. the breakfast table and you know it's fun it's funny you should say that um on that christmas that i got this my dad also bought all of us a snooker table ah. so of course having micro machines at the same time I did play snooker on it, but I also just got my little micro machines on it, made like little tracks out of like, it was a, from a Christmas cracker. There was like a little tiny deck of cards mm. that you got, I got in a Christmas cracker. So I just laid them out to make a course on there. And I used like the, the snooker cue and things like that. And That's just amazing. made a little course. And it, I, I have such a fond memory of that Christmas just doing that. Yeah. Based, in, based entirely on, you know, my enjoyment of micro machines because there yeah. are courses based on snooker tables exactly the same as that really. So, yeah, it's just a lovely game to play when you're a kid, um, and it's just great fun now. Yeah, I mean, you said at the beginning, very, you said sort of loosely based on Micro Machines. I think thinking about it, I'd say it's quite accurately based well, on Well, yeah, Micro I suppose really. so. As, as much as you can base it on a toy, yeah. you know, given that it doesn't really have a story or anything like that. No. Yeah, perhaps Lucy was very unfair. It, that is literally what you did with them. Yeah, and yes. Yeah, it's quite, actually quite a... A good adaptation into game form really isn't it i mean we touched we touched briefly on the later games you got v3 v4 they also did micromaniacs which was taken away from the brand and having little these little people running around did you ever yeah, play that i did i i bought it with um my birthday money one year i got i got because it was quite a budget game i got like 20 quid for my birthday and i think it was it was on sale for 20 pounds at the time so i bought it mm. i didn't get on with it no, apparently it's not that good. Um, I didn't like it. Yeah, coincidentally, there's uh, in the last issue of Retro Gamer, they've had a whole special on Micro Machines, so I've been that was very convenient for this episode actually. So I've been oh, reading a lot about good, that. Yeah. So yeah, I've been touching up a little bit on these these games I haven't played so much. Um, V4 I've got on the PS2, mm. um, which I've quite enjoyed. I've played a little bit of it. Um, it is good fun. It's quite good. Yeah, and then you got micro, more more recently this Micro Machines World Tour, which I don't know much about. I, but I think it's more of the same. I uh, yes, it's, it's. I think it's a. I think it's gone free to play. I think it's a free to play thing where you. Oh okay. Yeah. Or it's free to download, and you've got to pay to get the track. I don't know. I don't, mm. I, don't, I I don't think it had a very good reception. Oh, yeah, I did get a sense that it didn't. There was something, some issues with it, or it didn't have enough content in it, or something like that. Yeah, there's a very similar game called Toy Box Turbo. I was going to say that next, yeah, which is, um, I think it's by Codemasters as well, isn't it? It's by Codemasters, yeah, I don't think it's by Supersonic. Um, yeah. Because Supersonic themselves, actually, there was a game I was thinking, we, I might, we might still cover it, it's one of the games I wanted to cover at some point. 
Um, because they went on to do, um, they did a game called Supersonic Racers on PlayStation 1, which was kind Mm. of the same kind of gameplay, but with um, um, sort of power-ups and things. And it was kind of all, kind of like Wacky Races style characters. Oh, right. Um, And that didn't do, it didn't do badly, but it didn't do very well. It stayed relatively obscure. And then he did a follow-up to um, a sort of spiritual successor without all the characters called Circuit Breakers. Oh, yeah, Circuit Breakers. And I think Circuit Breakers is one of the most underrated or forgotten games on the PlayStation 1. It's it's such a good, fun little game. Um, Yeah. And I yeah so yeah they did a few things after that as well I think they did another I think they went on to do a sequel to Circuit Breakers called Circuit Blasters on PS2 mm. um, and I I'm sure they've done things more recently as well I'm sure they're still about um, doing things but yeah so I mean they they've there's a lot of other options for similar things out there isn't yeah. there really, these days yeah definitely um, but I, like I was saying earlier a lot of them introduce new things like power-ups and things and i think there is something really nice and pure about these originals um and it would be nice to see like a modern version of that just like an updated one that has all the courses for for all the three game and the four games for the military as well um and maybe sort of make things easier like no lives with the with the single player thing so you can play it without any stress and things like that it'd be lovely wouldn't it just on modern consoles just the complete original micro machines experience would be some you know and and i've sort of beefed up track editor as well so make it a bit more interesting yeah i mean we we've talked before about you know what a quote unquote switch game a game that feels most at home on the switch yeah a little just a cartridge a cartridge with all the games collected or like you know yeah even just a compilation yeah all the elements of one yeah. You know, it doesn't even need to be, you know, like a, a remaster or 3D or anything. Just, yeah. just put them out there. I'll yeah, play. yeah, definitely. That'd be great. I'd really yeah. like to see that. Yeah, mm, I think with micro machines, everyone's because uh, for some reason in my head, I thought this was like the definitive micro machines that everyone loved. But I don't think it's necessarily true. I think, I, I think, think a lot. V3 I think everyone. The one that everyone. It, it does seem to be. Everyone's yeah. got their own micro. It's either that or two. I think a lot of the time although two wasn't even in america supposedly so i think and the original was i think some people talk about the original a lot as well on the nes um and i think everyone's got their own favorite micro machines the one that they had you know Mm. and their star i think that this is mine though personally i would say yeah yeah yeah. i I never got on with the 3d ones as well they're good no you know i've got nothing against them but yeah, Micro Machines 96 is the one that holds the, the, the special place in my heart, I think. Yeah, me too. It's a great game. It's really fun to revisit it as well and just sort of sit and play it properly because I've, da- I've tried to load it up several times in the last few years and I always try one of the you know the single-player sequence of levels and I can get maybe get past the first one, but then I can't. I just keep falling off, you know, and I'll, keep, and I'll lose all my lives and then not do it again. So although I had to cheat to do it, it was nice to actually go through the whole thing. Um, and I had lo- loads of fun doing that that um, head-to-head thing. It was really, yeah. really good. I really like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. If it's if it's going for as cheap as I said it was earlier, eight as low as eight quid, then you should definitely pick it up because it's a it's a brilliant game. It's got so much content in there. For eight quid, that's insane. It's bargain. an absolute bargain. If it is really that cheap, um, yeah, go go and check it out. Definitely. Right, so uh, it's your pick next, isn't it? Yes. Mm. So what are we going to go for? Uh, we're going to be playing... Um, we're going to be playing a game um, sponsored by... Well, not sponsored by, but endorsed by a big international well-known theme park. Okay. We're going to be playing the game endorsed by Diggerland. <laughs> okay. We're going to be playing <laughs> Power Diggers. Power diggers. Oh, okay. Do you know what I? Again, in retro gamer, I think I've read this about this recently. They have a feature on quite obscure. This is why I knew of um, no one can stop Mr. Domino as well. I realised they have a regular feature about called Minority Report about quite unknown games, sort of popular but unknown games, or you know. And I'm pretty sure I've read about this recently 
in that. <laughs> well, I don't know much about it off the top of my head, though. I can't, okay. can't think what they said now. But, uh, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Okay, Power Diggers. It's actually endorsed by um, Diggerland, is it? Diggerland, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I didn't Diggerland's know... a real place, if anyone's doubting that. Look yeah, out. yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. yeah. I didn't know they were around then, though, in the PS1 time. Oh, times. yeah. Yeah, you, you, they, if you go there, you could... They, they, they you drive big... Diggers. You could drive diggers, yeah. yeah. You can sit in the shovel of a digger <laughs> and they'll spin you round and round and round. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> they got they got all sorts. They got all sorts. It's great. Okay. I, was, I, yeah. I watched the um, there's a YouTube video actually about all the history of Diggerland and everything, mm-hmm. and how they spread out. They started and they in like one place in England, and they got like three or four, and it spread to America now. There's like an American Diggerland. It's a great idea, isn't it? It's a great idea. I was saying, yeah. I was saying about it um, to my girlfriend. I was watching it with. I said it'd be really great because you it practically builds itself. Yeah. You just pull up a few diggers, tell the people, charge people admission. Right, <laughs> they start digging the place that they build it for you. Yeah, you don't they, need to they do anyone. the building. <laughs> right, all right, kids. This is what we need to do. We're going to be digging the foundations over here. Yeah, uh, you just do that. Uh, how much have you paid? Ten quid. Okay, you'll be doing this for the next eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's we'll like slave labour without them without them realizing. But... Yeah. You just get them to build the place, and they ch- you charge them yeah. for the privilege. Yeah, it's like the simplest Genius. idea for a theme park, isn't it? Like you literally bring the diggers in, and they come and say, "Right, what are we doing to build this theme park?" No, no, don't worry. You guys go home. That's 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 your work done. You've brought them here. That we'll is... take it. We'll take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically like the first digger land. Like it was just you go there and dig holes, and then someone come in and fill it in at the end of the day, and then the next yeah. day people are coming and dig the hole again. It's hilarious. Genius. Isn't it? Yeah. Genius. Okay, well I'll look is is the actual game is that what happens in the actual game or is no. it more is it more elaborate than that? Um I seem to I remember would... there's some sort of challenge is there challenges in or something you've got to do weird stuff in it. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was hoping you wouldn't know about it, you see. I was yeah, hoping you sorry. wouldn't know about that. I've so when it comes to the research. point where you've got rescue turtles from a pond using your digger, you'd be like, Wow, I didn't expect That's that. That's right. To I remember I, now you've said that I remember that being a feature in the article <laughs> sorry i'll have to not look up these obscure games in the future yeah uh sorry sorry to disappoint you there no i think we'll have fun with it it's, it's an interest if nothing else it's a it'll be an interesting thing to talk about i think yeah to be fair when i read it it may have struck me at the time as as a game that you would enjoy <laughs> <laughs> And that you might actually bring up on the show one day. <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. Maybe I'm making that up. Okay, um, cool. <clears throat> right, so this has been uh, uh, Podum Up. Actually, before I do anything else, mm. Google Podcasts. Oh, okay. Has been on go- have you been following the, my things oh, on Twitter about this? this? Yeah. Oh, this is ridiculous. Basically, if you've been, if you normally listen to us on Google Podcasts and you've found this time that you haven't, you can't, because your subscription has changed to a subscription of another podcast called Podum Up, which is full of Swedish pop culture. It's because Google Podcasts think that we are the same podcast. So they've changed every subscription to us, to our Swedish doppelgangers. Um, we're not in the directory anymore. You can't find us. Even if you put our RSS feed address into Google Podcasts, it thinks we are the Swedish Podum Up. And... And, and right, yeah. Apparently, they talk about games. What in the in that one? Yeah. Do they? How do you know that? Yeah. I know that because uh, Google Translate, right? Ah. Oh, because I yeah. looked at their Twitter feed because I thought, yeah, I'll have a look, see what's going on with them, um, mm. just see if they they've mentioned any of the confusion. Mm. And someone posted. I'm not even going to try and say it because I, I can't speak no, don't. Swedish. No. But the translation is, it's not a pure gaming pod, but Pod 'em Up Cast is really good with game talk sometimes. Oh. So that's going by Google Translate. But yeah, maybe that's what the confusion is. Well, it's either that or they mean us. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they mean us? I mean, we talk about games most of the time, but some occasionally we veer off into something else. But I was going to say maybe, maybe we're you know, maybe if, they mean if, us. <laughs> if someone listens to us and comes away with the idea that we're not a pure gaming podcast, maybe I've just had a thought. 
we've been wondering where all our listeners are basically on twitter because we get we get some lovely people talking to us but only not 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 a huge amount do you think they're all over there talking talking to them yeah. thinking that we are there <laughs> check their email they've just got a load of people emailing them about Katamari Damas oh man can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> anyway I've been trying to iron this out I've been talking to our hosts Anchor who have been really lovely and um, getting back to me really quickly about it but unfortunately there's not a lot they can do they did give me access um, to to be able to resubmit our podcast to Google uh, but I've done that and it still thinks we're we're the same ones. I can go in. I can see the stats for the Swedish bottom up, not ours. Are they doing just, well? Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell because it only counts from when I put it in, oh. so it may have accumulated a few now. But I, I, I wish it said well. zero at the time. There's, there's no ill will between us. I just no. Well, I do kind of wish they picked a different name. I yeah. must admit, <laughs> like. I'm sure they're they're great guys and everything, but when you set up a podcast, do you not just have a quick look to see if someone else has already got that name? Well, we just did. Just saying, we did. That's why we're called Podum Up because at the time no one had the name Podum Up, which they cannot say because we had it. <laughs> but <laughs> apart from that, I bear them no ill will, and it isn't their fault. This is Google's fault for thinking that two different podcasts about that are based on two different languages, for some reason, are the same podcast, which we clearly are not. When so, you do the album art, I joked about this on Twitter that we should call it it's the real Podum Up, like the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> when yeah. you do the album art, put, just put the real, you know, like the real the bit real... from the real Ghostbusters logo. Just stick that. Oh over yeah, the I could Podum do, couldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to make it clear, just in case anyone yeah. who who is able to find us knows that. <laughs> if we change our name to the real Podum Up, maybe that would distinguish us enough for Google to realise that we're different pod- podcasts. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it's, it's been giving me a headache all week just trying to sort it out really yeah um <clears throat> but i've put um this google podcast do have a little forum where you can put questions and things uh, and either other people or possibly sometimes staff members answer i did that a couple of days ago i haven't had anything yet i'm not holding my holding my breath for it but you never know maybe someone can sort it out Assuming they can't, there is. I'm so, I'm so sorry. There isn't really anything I can do. You may have to change your podcast client in order to keep listening to us, which is annoying for me because I use Google Podcasts. That's my podcast client of choice for the time being, anyway. Um, so I've got to listen to us on something else when I put my put the episodes out. Trouble is, so anyone listening on Google Podcasts ain't going to hear you say that. Well, no, exactly. I'm, I'm hoping that they've tried to. They've realised we haven't had a. Well, they've seen that we've been replaced by another another podcast and they've gone elsewhere to find the latest episodes i'm yeah, hoping hopefully. if if that's you then i'm so sorry but i think it's it's out of our hands really and it is annoying because you know google podcast is kind of the default client for android devices really isn't it yeah i suppose yeah and the fact that we're not on it anymore is really annoying but and it's not uh, just a case of you know oh well we'll just change your name no because you, it, hey, it's we our, had the name first yeah you made the name up, so you know you've got the you've got that sort of fatherly attachment to it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. I don't. I don't really want to change our name. And coming up with a name for something is the worst thing. It's really hard. It took us ages, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were uh, some terrible name suggestions. I'm sure when we were discussing it to begin with. We had I can't some remember pretty. Them, but I'm sure there were some awful ones. Don't want yeah. to go through that again. No. No. We don't. Um, and even if we do that, we'd have to, the thing we'd have to change is our is our host really is our is our feed link because that is yeah. is inevitably tied to for some reason somewhere in their code either a computer has done it or someone's manually done it they've tied the two rss feeds together into one amorphous blob and they're just they're one and the same to google so we'd have to change that and that means changing everyone over and we may not even be able to put a redirect in the old one because maybe google will track that and find us and merge the new one as well so i don't know what to do there's nothing i we can do about it really i don't think (sighs) without losing a lot of listeners so we just want to talk about games that's all we want to do you know yeah anyway everywhere else as far as i can tell we're still there. You might have to, like on Spotify, I think we're still way down the list when you put in bottom up. And of course, they're number one. So I don't know what they're doing that we're not doing. But anyway, if you search us, you will find us. You can find us on podumup.live website. As long as we remember to keep registering, renewing the domain, that will always yep. be there. Always be there. <laughs> 
uh, you can email us podemup at gmail.com and reach us on Twitter at podemup uh, and I think that's about everything yeah, unless there's anything you want to add no I think that wraps it up in a nice little package well I'm getting pretty tired now my throat's going so um, I, we, we will bid you adieu until the next episode uh, have a nice time bye bye <laughs> Whatever you're doing, enjoy it. Have a nice time. Have a nice time. Bye. Bye.